every time that you introduce another God, what you are doing, you are introducing another form of behavior, another um, form of um, worship, another form of um, attraction, because God is one. And in our scripture this evening, we're going to see where the Bible said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And the word goes on to say, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. The rabbis teach. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. In other words, at all times you must be teaching this one God. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Let me tell you something. The, 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 the nation of Israel, the orthodox nation, because I told you last week that one of the most anti-Christ, should I say, one of the nations that is, is most um, anti-religion or anti-Christ today is the Israel as a country. But when it comes to Israel as a worshipping nation, worshipping their God, they pay attention to how they worship. So the rabbis will teach in the synagogue and insist if you should ever go through a, a Jewish community on a Saturday morning. I was privileged to pass through Brooklyn, Brooklyn one Saturday morning. And let me tell you something, you would see them, the boys, the young people, their big, broad black hats running to the synagogue to hear the teachings of the rabbi. And if you note in the Old Testament, the way the priest would dress, the front left between his eyes, would have on his, his, his headdress, he would have on his phalanges, he would have on his long robe. In other words, he was dressing according to the word of God because he was going into the temple to represent God. Today, I want to remind us as a nation that there is only one God. And I don't care how many, um, how many, if it makes you comfortable to worship your car, your house, your money, and for people now who are so brilliant to come and tell you that it doesn't matter how you worship God. It matters how you worship God. Well, if it doesn't matter how you worship your God, you go to one of your radio sessions and tell them, play Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. And you'll hear the sound what they give you in your ears. You go to one of these um, radio sessions and ask them for them to bow your heads, let us pray and read the scriptures. And they'll tell you that this is not church. When the world wants to worship God as they feel like. But when it comes to the church, they want to tell us how we must worship God. I'm going to talk to you this evening. <clears throat> God is one. It means that God has one character. There is one divinity. God is one means that there is only one creator of heaven and earth. There is only one, amen, supreme being 
is the only God. He's the sole God. He's the supreme and absolute being. He's the source of all things. Don't come and tell me, even the scientists now have debunked this whole argument about the Big Bang. Things just blew up and we get the, the, the various planets in the earth. The scientists have, have wised up and recognized that not no gossip. Because the more they <coughs> explore <coughs> the world, it's the more they are agreeing with David that says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament show it is on the earth. So there's only one God, the sole supreme God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In other words, St. John 1 verse 1 to 3. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In other words, everything that you, that you see on the earth, it never just evolved. It was made by God. The Bible said male and female created he them. So what God did was to make the first male and female rat. The first male and female mongoose. The first male and female woodpecker. The first male and female whale. The first male and female human being. God made the first replica and breathe into it the breath of life. Young people go to university. University doesn't turn you into a fool. Your environment must not turn you into a fool. And you young Christians that are going to university and come back to tell me that the professor said that there is no God. Who is that professor? He is a human being like you. And all happens to that professor is that he has studied more than you. But that does not give him the equating and the equality of God. He has two hands, two eyes, a nose with two nostrils, a mouth with say mouth and tooth, if he still has them in his ear or her mouth. So don't tell me that you have gone to higher learning, so you have come to appreciate a higher learning. The fool is set in his heart. There is no God. Who? The fool. The fool. The fool. Even the devil knows that there is one God and tremble. Did you know that God created Satan? But he made him first as Lucifer. Perfect being. And when pride entered his heart, God put him out of heaven. And he came down to the earth as Satan, as a devil. As a dragon. And multitudes of millions of angels came down with him. Because a third of heaven revolted with him. But at the end of the day. At the end of the day brothers and sisters. The devil knows that there is one God. And he what? He trembles. So even the devil. Who tells you about the multiplicity of gods. He knows that there's one God and he trembles. All things were made by the one God. There is only one God. I don't care how much money Mr. Musk have. I don't care what money Bill Gates have. Not important how much money, amen, Mr. Zuckerberg has. Not important how much money Mr. Issa or Mr. whatever his name has or whatever she has. <coughs> Nothing can equate to the one God. And I want to come and look closer to say that Jesus Christ is God manifested in the flesh. God manifested in the flesh. In the beginning was God. 
So G when you saw Jesus, it is God manifested in the flesh. So Jesus Christ is God. My God Almighty. You don't understand it because you're not spiritual, my friend. Until you get that spiritual awakening, you will never come to appreciate the fact that Jesus is the one God. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name, his name, the child's name shall be called what? Wonderful. Counselor. The mighty God. They were asking Father, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Isaiah 9 verse 6. Run to us. The child is born. When the child was prophesied of by Matthew. In the book of St. Matthew. By the angel. The angel said to Mary. Thou shalt bring a child and his name shall be called Jesus for he shall what save whose people his people from their sins it's God manifested in the flesh for without controversy Paul writing in the first Corinthians without controversy without any argument and Paul was an orthodox Jew Paul was a man who believed, come on now, who believed in the orthodoxity of God. That when Jesus Christ said, I am God, Paul set out to persecute him and to persecute those who followed Jesus. But on his way to Damascus to persecute the church, Jesus met him. But he knocked him from his horse, knocked him on the ground, knocked him off his horse. Paul said, who are you, Lord? And the voice came back, Paul, I am Jesus Christ, who you persecute. Run to us, therefore, great is a mystery of godliness. Paul writing, God was manifested in the flesh. Who what? God was manifested in the flesh. God is God is a manifest Jesus is a manifestation of the of the supernatural God. <clears throat> in the flesh <clears throat> this Jesus when he was crucified and when he came back from the grave this Jesus stood up and said Matthew 28 verse 19 and declared all power and all mean everything all mean leave nothing on the table he said all power is given unto me Jesus in heaven and in earth. Now, if Jesus Christ has all the power in the heavens and the earth, where is that space for another God to have power? All power. And I looked in the heavens and I saw only one throne, one throne, one throne, one throne. There's only one throne in heaven, and it's in the throne occupied, amen, by the one God. By the one God. By the one God. The Muslims will tell you that they don't worship Jesus. Why? Because they said nobody could kill their God. Now, watch this. Nobody killed Jesus. Jesus said, I will lay down my life, come on now, and I will take it all back. Nobody could have killed him, but he allowed mankind, my God, to, 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 to operate as a, a murderer. But three days later, Jesus came back from the grave. And he said, all power <coughs> is given unto me in heaven and also in the earth. One God. One God. How much God? One God. One God. <clears throat> now, because he's one God, he has one character. And that is why we who worship him have to worship him a certain way. Why? Because he has no other way of operating. My God, he changeth not. In other words, 
The same God in the beginning is the same God in the present and is the same God to come. My God, when he returns for the church, the same God. There is only one. There's only one God. The one God has one character. And this character, this one God, he is good. What are the character? God is good. God is good. And how does he show him being good? The Bible My brothers and sisters who are watching this this evening, a number of people are calling me. But I, I challenge you this evening. Let's talk about the one God and curse those spirits of destruction in the name of Jesus and shut them down in Jesus' name. I shut down every phone that's calling this number right now. I plead the blood of Jesus against you in Jesus' name. The one God has one character. He's good. God is good. And the psalmist David said, for his mercies endure it forever. <laughs> The goodness of God. He cares for the hungry and the helpless. One way of showing his goodness. He cares for the hungry and he cares for the helpless. His mercies endureth forever. Let's look at this one God. How he has revealed his goodness. He sent Elijah. To stand up to 850 prophets of Baal. One man. Empowered by God. To stand against 850. Empowered by the, 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 the thought of Baal. Because Baal was an image put up somewhere. But as, Abel, as Isaac Elijah was had to leave Judah. And get into the desert. The Bible said he was hungry. And this good God fed Elijah by a raven, a John Crow, we would call it. And if he, he created a brook that Elijah could drink water from. This God, being a good God, amen. If he fed, he fed Israel in the wilderness. With manna and quail. This God fed Israel with manna and quail. In other words, as the 600,000 people left Egypt, plus children, adults plus children, and God sustained them in the wilderness by feeding them with manna from an eye. And at one time Israel said, we are tired of eating manna. We want some meat. And the Bible said he blew um, quail some off the ocean. And it fell in the camp of Israel. So God provided not just manna, but he provided with protein. Um, quail, birds, young birds. This good God, the nature of God to be good. He... Fed over five, he, he preserved the clothes of Israel as they traveled through the wilderness. At one time, they never wanted, as they traveled, the clothes on their backs were preserved. The good God, his character is to be good. And I'm showing you the God of the Old Testament as he handled himself in the Old Testament. He provided water from a rock. He made a highway to the Red Sea. The good God. And watch this. That was God manifested in the old. What God now manifested through the man Christ Jesus in the New Testament. In the New Testament. As the people followed him into the desert. To listen to his words of teaching. The good God who can't help but to be good. The Bible said he fed. 5,000 men plus women and children with five little loaves and two little fish. The good God. So therefore, if I say God is one, the same one God 
who was touched with love to feed his people in the wilderness. When he came on earth as a man, Christ Jesus, he was touched with love. The same good God who is one. God in the Old, God in the New Testament fed 5,000 plus women and children with five little loaves and two little fish. God's character. When we say God is one, he has one character. In the old he's feeding, in the new he's feeding because it is the same God. Oh, somebody need to get that. So you can't see God in the old in one way and come back and write him over in the new in another way. He has to be consistent. And so the same God in the old that was good is the same God as a man Christ Jesus in the new that is good. God is one. So as God in the old, he maintains his good character in the new. Another way to see the oneness of God is the way we worship him. The way we worship him. In the old, he, he, he deserves, he, sorry, he demands a type of worship. Here is God in the old. As one God in the Old Testament, he expects one type of worship. What type of worship does he expect? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, one God, with all thine heart, all thy soul, all thy might. So God of the Old Testament, the God of the Old Era, expected worship to be coming with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might. Did he change in the New Testament? When he came as a man, Christ Jesus. No, listen to the word again. In the New Testament, God demands the same type of worship. Why? Because it is the same God. It is the one God. He doesn't change. He changes not. Don't you know that our God, he changes not? Listen to the God in the New Testament. Then said Jesus unto his disciples in the New Testament, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited? If he gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What am I saying? I'm saying in the old, God demanded total worship. Total worship. What does God need from us? Total worship. What does God need from us to be available to worship him totally? What does God need from us? God needs for us to present ourselves to him as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable uh, unto him. For he expected this to be our reasonable service. So in the world, God demanded that they come to him. And he said, when you come to me, I'm looking for you to come whole, total. What does God need? God needs us to worship him. Somebody says, God don't need you. Well, he might not need you, but God needs me. Why do you say that? In the Garden of Eden, God made every animal, every fish put in the sea, every bird flying in the trees. Every wolf, every lion, every tiger, everything God made and put there in the Garden of Eden. Yet, although God made these things and put them there, God could not reason with them. He could not talk to them. So what did God, what did God have to do? God had to make something that was able to 
talk to him and give him worship. So what does God need? God needs us to worship him. And so God made Adam. And what did God do with Adam? God separated Eve out of Adam. Took Eve out of Adam. Took Eve out of Adam. Took Eve out of Adam. Put the two of them together. And God now was able to come down. The spirit of God. They just cool up the day. And talk to Adam. And God said to Adam. Adam, name every creature inside here. And anything you call it. That's the name I agree with. God needs my hands. Oh Lord. Oh no. God needs my feet. God needs your eyes. Is that God talking to you over Facebook now? It's a human being. God don't talk to you like that. God needs us to present ourselves to him that he can use us to talk to the world. So for those of you who are preaching that God will talk through stone, the Bible says, if my we will worship him, he will raise up stones. That's that's um in our English people would understand exactly what that language is saying. No stone can praise God. Shut up, stone. No donkey can praise God. Shut up, donkey. But human beings, stones, uh, refer to the rejects of the earth. People that have no regard for God. God will raise them up to do his work because God needs us. So the rabbi will teach that you don't want people to love you. You want people to need you. Because no matter how many people love you, if they don't need you, they won't pay attention to you. So when God made us in his image, God wants us to worship him totally. <coughs> Sorry, totally and completely. So the same God of the old says, when you come to me, come with all your heart, with all your soul, come with all your might. And it come back in the new to say, when you come to me, if you, any man come to me, you must be willing to deny yourself. You must be willing to take up your cross. And follow him. Total sacrifice. Total worship. And that is why our God who is one. The same thing he demanded of the people of Israel. The same thing is demanding of the bride of Christ today. The bride of Christ. Let's talk a little about the bride of Christ. The one God and one nation. As a special bird, as a special nation. Scripture said he came unto his own. Who are the own? The Jews as a nation. The Jews as a nation. He came unto his own and his own received him not. So as a nation, they rejected him. But there are people within the nation of Israel who accepted him. Who are these people? The disciples. The, the 3,000 that are baptized under the Pentecost. The 5,000 that are baptized in Acts chapter 4. Amen. The, the millions who have accepted Jesus today. So the bride is not just Gentiles. The bride is anyone who accepts Jesus Christ as God and is willing to put on the name. Another thing about God is family as a name. His family as a God always has a name. When Moses went to Egypt and Pharaoh said to Moses, Who send you? Moses said, He says to tell you, His name is I am that I am. Hallelujah. Amen. When he came to Abraham back there in the earth of the Chaldees, and Abraham moved to Haran with his father Tira. And his father died in Aaron. Then God said to Abraham, Get up now, Abraham. It's time to move on to cross the river Euphrates. Amen. And in the crossing over, 
into the river Euphrates. Amen. Abraham moved into the promises of God. Hallelujah. And Abraham knew him as Yahweh. Yahweh. Amen. The, the, the great one. Amen. The holy one. The exalted one. Amen. My camera is dying. Amen. The exalted one. God knew him. Amen. And exalted him as this, as this, as this one God. Amen. The exalted God. Abraham knew him as Yahweh. Oh, glory to God. Another time he was referred to as jealous. Amen. That was his name. God as jealous. Amen. Another time, amen, he, you see, at various times and, and, and in various instances, God is always, every time you come to God, he comes, he has a name. And so when Isaiah was prophesying about Jesus to come, he said he's going to give him a name that is above every other name. Amen. And so when Jesus came, hallelujah, um, you could hear uh, John the Baptist declare, Behold the Lamb of God. Someone said, Where is he? He said, See him there coming. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the earth. I am his forerunner. Watch John the Baptist now. John the Baptist says, He's so great and holy. That I can't even, I'm not even worthy to pull his shoelace. I'm not even worthy to, um, to, 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 to baptize him. But Jesus said, John the Baptist, allow it to be so now. Because so you must fulfill the prophets. But when Jesus came, as a matter of fact, the day Jesus was born, they could give him no other name but Jesus. Why? Because of the disciples uh, sorry, the angel said, call his name Jesus. Now let me talk to my friends who speak Greek and say, no, it was not Jesus, it was Yeshua. Well, let me talk to you, my friend. His name, his name, his name is the all-powerful name. Watch this. So although you might call your child Jesus or Jesus, the child might have the name, but what defines a child is a character. Our God, the one God, who formed the earth, who said, let there be and there was. When he came as a man, Christ Jesus, I heard Jesus said, before Abraham was born, I am, in other words, I am from the beginning. Oh Lord, I hear Jesus said, all power is now mine. Now, if Jesus is saying that all power is, he has taken on therefore the persona, the role of God. So I have no other alternative therefore, but to accept that if Jesus the man accept the role of God, Jesus is God. Jesus is God. Now watch this. As a one God therefore. Is expecting the same type of worship. I want to go to another characteristic of, of God. God the promise keeper. God the promise keeper. In the Old Testament. God said to Abraham, Abraham, through your seed, all the world will be blessed. Abraham, I'm going to make of you a great nation. The Lord said to Abraham, get out of your country, get from your kindred, get from your father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. God said, Abraham, Abraham, I'll make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee. And make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you, Abraham. I will curse him that curse you, Abraham. <coughs> and in you, all the families of the earth 
shall be blessed. God in the old was a promise keeper. Can I say, is the only God that makes promises and brings them to pass. Is the only God that makes promises and brings them to pass. He said, I'm not a man that I should lie. I am not stuck concerning my promises. My God. God said to Israel at the Red Sea, the God, the promise keeper. He, God said to Israel, he said, stand still. Moses tell the people, stand still and see me salvation of the Lord. See me save them. And God went on and he said to Moses, Moses, these people that you see today, the Egyptians, you will see them again no more. Did God keep his promise? Yes, God kept his promise. Because right before their eyes, they watched that sea came back and drowned, amen, the armies of Egypt. What am I saying? I'm saying that God is a promise keeper. Watch him now manifested as a man Christ Jesus in the new. Watch the promise keeper now. Jesus declared to his people. In St. John 14 verse 26. But the comforter which is the Holy Ghost. Whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things. <clears throat> and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Hear the promise keeper. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither be, let it be afraid. God, the promise keeper. Watch this now. He said when I go... I will send the, the, the Father, will send the Comforter. Watch this. In my name, Jesus, the Comforter shall come. So the Bible said on the day of Pentecost, when they were in the upper room, they were gathered together in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house, <coughs> where they were sitting. Man, and the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they all spake in tongues. The promise keeper. 800 years before the Holy Ghost came at Pentecost. God anointed Joel to prophesy. In the last days I will pour out of my spirit. Watch this. So as a God of the old. He promised Abraham to make him great. As a God of the new. He promised a church. He was going to send the Holy Ghost. And don't we have the Holy Ghost today? Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. Isn't the Holy Ghost teaching us things? Isn't the Holy Ghost bringing things to our remembrance? Isn't the Holy Ghost empowering us? Isn't the Holy Ghost bringing peace to our hearts today? Mighty God, there's nothing good that you ask and that you pray in the Spirit and ask God for that He will withhold from you because He made a promise. He said, when I go, the comforter will come. We today, amen, have the promise of the Holy Spirit. I want to apologize to my group today because the devil don't want this word to be preached. But we are preaching this word. We are teaching this word. We are bringing this word to a dying nation. We are telling somebody that there is only one God and God is one. God is one. So just to review. We're making a point that God is one. We're making a point that the one God is a promise keeper. We're making a point that the one God, amen, is of one character. We're making a point that the one God, amen, is the same God in the old, manifested as a man Christ Jesus in the new. We're making a point that no matter what the world may present to us, as God, no matter who the world will um, big up, make it look like he's God, all things were created and made by this one God. 
and all the nation of the world have got to come to worship this one God. He's a God in the old. He's not a God in the new. He's one God. Hallelujah. So Abraham name as Yahweh. Today we know him as Jesus Christ. Yeshua, whatever you, whatever language you speak, my God, his name brings deliverance. His name brings peace. His name brings joy. His name brings happiness. Amen. For unto us is born this day in the city of David. He is a savior and he is Christ the Lord. I therefore say to you, amen, as I bring this, 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 this Bible class, amen, to, amen, uh, crescendo, I say to you, therefore, that the same God of the old is the same God of the new. Come on now. We've got to make the point. He said, I am, hallelujah, I am, tell it. Egypt tell Pharaoh that I am that I am today. He still says that I am your keeper. I am your Lord. I am your savior. I am your provider. I am your protector. I am anything you want me to be for you that is good because God is good. Hallelujah. He said, I am your friend. He said, I am your savior. He said, I love you and I care for you. Amen. The same way he said to Israel that I am going to fight for you. I'm going to defend you. I'm going to be your strength. I'm going to be your Lord. I'm going to be your savior. Amen. And even when Goliath stand before David, amen, and the arms of Israel to declare himself as the only one, send me a man. David said, amen, you come to me with a sword and a spear. I come to you in the name of the Lord. Why? Because he said, he said, no enemy, no enemy, no enemy can stand against you when you come in in his name. Oh glory to God. And so David a mighty man of God. A mighty warrior. Amen. When David stood before Amen. Goliath. David was not standing there questioning who his God was. David knew who his God was. Flip to the New Testament. When we stand up today to declare in our workplace, in our communities, in our homes, in the den of wickedness, in the hell, anywhere you go, the Lord says, if you make your bed in hell... I'm going to be there. He said, if you take the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost part of the earth, he said, I am there. So no matter where you're going, no matter who, amen, threatens you. At one time, the, in the nation of Israel, came up against the enemy and the enemy was designing some new weapons amen some weapons that nobody saw before i heard god said to amen in elijah to isaiah tell israel that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper and tell israel that every tongue that rise against you in judgment you shall condemn them let me talk to you again amen at one time my God, when the Hittites could have beat Israel alone, they came together. Amen. Five kings of the king of Bashan. Amen. That were giants. They came up against Israel. And I heard, my God, they said, the, the Israelites, God is a God of the valley. He can't fight him in the mountain. But I hear somebody say, the God of the mountain is a God in the valley. And where you go is God all by himself. Him no need no army to fight for him because he's God all by himself. Yes, the same God who defended Elijah against 850 prophets. 
the same God who when Elisha took up the mantle and hit Jordan it open, the same God who brought Israel across the Red Sea, the same God when they were thirsty who provided them with water, the same God when they were hungry, he provided them with food, the same God, my God Almighty, when they came to the Jericho, hallelujah, Jericho was shut up, God just said to, to, to amen to Joshua, tell Israel to march around Jericho, amen, they did, they went around Jericho 11 times, and on the 12th, and the 12th time, on the 13th time, when they went around Jericho, God said to Joshua, tell the people to just shout, and Jericho come down, don't watch the shout, of the enemy today. Don't watch the intimidation of those who are walking around Jamaica like they own the country with their weapons of mass destruction. Let them know that we have a God who is the same God who fight of the king of Bashan and his brothers, who fight Goliath and his brothers, who fight, my God, Baal worshippers, Ahab and his Baal worshippers, the same God who who tear down when, when the evil boys were thrown into the into the furnace of fire, the same God when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. Come on now, it is the same God who's going to defend you today. So I hear somebody said, "God, send me help from the sanctuary and strengthen me out of Zion." I hear somebody said, "The Lord is my light and my salvation." Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Come on now. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, when they rise up to eat up my flesh, come on now. The same God who defended Israel against the king of Bashan is the same God today who shall allow your enemies to fall down. They shall stumble and fall. Amen. Do an ocean and camp against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. Come on now, the same one God. If you trust Him, if you depend on Him, if you look to Him, Kosha, if you look to Him, if you allow Him to hold your hand, if you allow Him to lead you. He's going to take care of you and watch this, the same God who promised, amen. At one time, God said to Abraham, amen, I'm going to lead your people down in Egypt for 400 years. They shall be in a foreign land. And my God, it happened. But guess what? He said, you shall worship me on this very mountain. And they took the bone of Joseph took it out of Egypt and came to Sinai to worship. I want to tell God's people this evening, the same God, he doesn't change and can change. He will never change. Trust him. Depend on him. Serve him. Because he's a one God. The same God. The God yesterday, the God today, and the God forever. I love him. I trust him. He's my source. He's my life. He's my everything. Without him, I'm nothing. What about you? Thank God. And I can look to this video this evening and tell somebody, Jesus saves. Can we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor and adore you. We worship and magnify you. God, you are worthy, and all glory and honor and praise belong to you. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, and we thank you. Thank you for revealing yourself to your people. Hallelujah. Lord God, those that are stumbling this evening and are wondering, Lord, where did they fall in your plan? Oh, I heard at one time you said to God's people, I know the plans I have for you. Plans, hey, Moshe. Ah, to bless you, plans to plant you, make you great. I want to pray now, Lord, for strength, for healing and deliverance on this platform. 
that your people will be blessed. Hear us now while we tell you thanks. Continue to bless this ministry. Continue to expand this ministry. All that people be saved from this ministry. We bless you and tell you thanks now. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. May God bless you. May God keep you. May you be confident in this one God. Never change. Don't lose hope in him. He's still our hope. God bless you. Thanks for coming on. See you again next week. Same place. Same time. Because God is still one. God bless you. In Jesus name.